papers, uh, the Austrian free market economists had predicted all these problems would come, and they were certainly correct in, in everything that they said. Of course, they're not very satisfied, including myself, with uh, the so-called solutions, because uh, it, it looks like we're spending a lot of energy and a lot of money uh, trying to patch a system together that is unworkable. So we have Congress spending a lot of money. We have Treasury very much involved in trying to pick and choose uh, uh, which worthless ass asset <laughs> that we're going to buy. And, of course, the Federal Reserve is involved in injecting trillions of dollars that nobody seems to be keep keeping track of. But uh, what we're failing to do, I think, is to recognize that the system uh, no longer works. But I can understand why we do this, because, uh, you know, if Congress couldn't do this and if the Fed couldn't do this and Treasury couldn't do this, it would make us all irrelevant. And instead of looking at the causes of this and, and then finding the solutions aren't going to be found here, we, uh, we have to make ourselves uh, uh, feel, feel pretty important. But I think there's another reason why we think we're pretty important. It's because, in a way, our interference in the market corrections that tried to come about since 1971 seemed to work. I mean, the failure was established in 1971 with a system that had no way of automatically correcting the balance of, of payment and the, and the account, current account deficits. And that's, that's where the problem has been. And the economists, whether they were left or right or middle over the last several decades, have always said this current account deficit is a big problem. And now, now it's totally out of hand. So here we are struggling with all these rules and shifting back and forth and, and really getting nowhere. But my question is directed toward uh, when we come to the full realization that the system is unworkable, what are we going to do? What have you thought about doing? And already we see uh, talk in the newspapers, we see articles about a new international world reserve currency. And to me, that's pretty important because the fiat dollar reserve system is not going to work anymore. And that's the information that we have, have to uh, accept and, uh, and, and decide what we're going to do in the future. Also, this is not new in history. Currencies have failed. Financial systems have failed. And generally, to restore the confidence that everybody's talking about, they usually have to go back to a currency with integrity to it, rather than just fiat money. And, you know, the stage is, is there. It's not impossible. Already, the central banks of the world still own 15% of all the gold that was ever mined in all of history. So they hold on to this gold for some reason, and, and therefore uh, something has to give, or are we going to keep trying to waste more money and time patching this system together? Just last week there was a report that Iran uh, purchased $75 billion worth of gold, took their reserves out of Europe, bought gold and put it in Asia. So is that a sign of the times, and is, is that moving on? Now my question is, in your meetings, and you had a meeting just recently with other central bankers, does this thought come up about a new international world reserve currency? And if so, does the, does the subject of gold ever come up? How do you restore the confidence? Have you recently had conversation with any central banker? And uh, is there a move on to replace the dollar system? Because this dollar system is essentially declared dead. Uh, because uh, it's not working. But th this, this indeed was predictable because of these tremendous imbalances wh that were never allowed to be corrected, uh, and they were always patched up. We always came in. We'd spin. We'd inflate. Uh, we would, uh, uh, you know, run up deficits. And since 71, we've been able to correct these problems. Could you tell me what kind of conversations you've had regarding a new reserve currency? Yes, Congressman. Um I don't think the dollar system is dead. I think the dollar remains the premier international currency. Um, we've seen uh, a good bit of appreciation in the dollar recently during the crisis precisely because there's been a lot of interest in the safe haven and the liquidity of dollar markets. And the uh, Federal Reserve has been engaged in swap agreements to make sure there's enough dollar liquidity in other countries because the need for dollars is so strong. So I think the dollar system uh, remains quite strong. I do agree with you very much on one point, which is about the current accounts. The current account imbalances have proved to be a very serious problem. It was, in fact, the large capital inflows from those current accounts which created a lot of the financial imbalances we saw and have led to some of the problems we're seeing. And, and one of the silver linings in this huge gray cloud is that we're seeing some improvement in greater balance in, in our current account uh, deficits. But does the subject of a new regime ever come up? No, it doesn't. And does the subject of gold ever come up in any of your conversations? 
only in terms of uh, the sales that the central banks are planning. The gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Velasquez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 